have a favorite movie or a favorite scene in a movie? Um, sounds so bad, but it's the truth. I love the virgin suicides, and I really like the last scene. Favorite movie of all time is probably probably Saving Private Ryan. I guess my favorite movie has to be Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, um, because it was based off a story from one of my favorite writers, Hunter S. Thompson. My favorite movie, I'm gonna say, is Amelie. The Life Aquatic, I really like that movie. Bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie because it had so much dirty potty humor, which you never, ever, ever, ever see women engaging in. Uh, so many, so many favorite movies and so many favorite everything. For me, it's tough to pick any one favorite thing of anything because I try to see the, the wider spectrum of all things. I look at Batman like he's like a Greek god, like a, like just a, another story that gives us hope and some sort of purpose. I know that's absurd, but if you ask a bunch of 33-year-old guys about Batman, buckle up for a pretty weird and heated discussion about how important this, this guy is to them. I just watched uh, A Separation. Have you seen that? What a great movie, man. And it's not like I connect with someone living in Iran, but those struggles are just dealing with the idea of like how to live a good life and the importance of honesty and honor and integrity and stuff. I totally relate to that. My favorite movie of all time is gonna be Forrest Gump. He just goes and does what he feels and he acts on what he feels. And my favorite is just when he's just running and like the sun setting is like, I'm done. Do you feel like you see reflections of yourself in the media? Do you feel like you see people that look like you or talk like you or sound like you? Absolutely. Um, well, uh, y yes, yes and no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Um, not as much as I would like to see, but it's getting better for sure. Um, yeah, I would say that I do. Uh, yeah, I, I see a few people that look like me in music videos and TV shows. I don't see a lot of people like me in the media for certain. It's not a look that's happening right now. I mean, in Portland, there's a bit of a, there's some gender queer stuff happening and that's, that's imaged, but it's not. There's nobody on a Target commercial that looks like me. <laughs> yeah, all the time, and it makes me mad. <laughs> I don't even really want to answer that because I see people that look like me in the media and movies all the time. I'm like, white girl. Every day, that's the inspiration, especially with what I'm trying to do um, with music and my art, uh, because I know that some, somebody's out there ready to accept my image. It's good to know that just looking like regular old me can, can get by. Physically, I do. Um, especially there's this kind of genre that seems to be emerging, especially on reality shows about fat people doing things. Like as opposed to just including fat people on any reality show or scripted show, it's this you know, novelty of like, oh, well, here's a couple who's planning their wedding, but they're fat. <laughs> so like somehow that makes it totally different. I, I think it's no secret that, that Asians are hugely underrepresented in the media. You know, if there's ever an Asian character, it's a nerd or a computer programmer or sorry, an Asian male character, it's you know, that or a some sort of service person. Um, and, you know, if it's an Asian female, it's some sort of like sex pod or dragon lady or also nerd. There's one web series, Awkward Black Girl, and I don't even think that she is necessarily an identical match, but I don't think that that's a reason. That doesn't make me feel isolated. You know, my Barbies didn't look like me, but I, I don't know. I see Leah Dunham girls and I think on a, on an ethnic level or on a social level, on an economic level, I don't relate, but on a, on a creative level, I do that show girls. I might throw out girls. I mean, girls is like, you know, the thing. Of course you can see yourself in that. Girls, I, which is supposed to be something I identify with, I'm like, ah, oh, this is a little fake. It's so good, it's so on point. It's like, it's written so well and it's so nonchalant. You know, Lena Dunham's character is 
extremely self-obsessed and it's, it's maybe not shown in the obvious ways, but it, it's true, like, oh, like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, how am I going to figure this out? It's so important that I, like, follow what's inside of me. <laughs> That's totally me, like, I'm not in, in touch with the world around me in the way that I should be. I'm such a daydreamer that I can watch, like, I, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and be like, oh my gosh, I totally identify with this witch vampire hunter character. And it's, like, obviously I'm a human with no supernatural powers, so. Like, I remember when I was young watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and seeing a lesbian couple in a bed for the first time. And that was, that was definitely a move forward. And it's a move forward at all that you have a primetime television show now that's about a gay couple, for instance. But again, it's like a white affluent upper middle class, upper class gay couple that wants to have a baby. So like you still have all these like really specific social norms that are being pushed on this sort of culture. And so I guess to see like, and it's not even necessarily me represented in the media, but like the people that I hang out with and the values that we share. I mean, one, I'd want to see more people of color. I'd want to see people who aren't necessarily invested in these, um, you know, these institutions that are archetypes. How do you feel when you see advertising that uses images from your life to kind of try and sell you stuff? Oh, gross. Like, like how do I feel like when there's like, like, like a car commercial where it's like a couple of hipsters playing like uh, doing a scavenger hunt while they're listening to the shins? I don't like it. I don't like it. Make, it, it does the opposite of work on me. I don't know who it works on, but I, I feel like I see what they're doing and it's insulting. Oh yeah, uh, have you ever seen like a McDonald's commercial for black people? <laughs> They're always dancing. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, McDonald's to all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, pickles, onions on the sesame seed bun. And the black girl's like, hey, what's up? And she's like bobbing her hair. <laughs> The media is trying to, to move to a point of connection with, with our generation, and with that, they're trying to um, evolve into exactly what we like to do, exactly where we like to hang out. And so you, you are seeing in advertisements uh, some relation to, to real life, but it does, doesn't influence me at all. The media and, and marketing companies have to try hard to get to me. Harvesting personal information from the internet concerns me. I worry that we will lose an ability to define ourselves in a more natural way. It's scary. It's really scary. Like there's an ad in the um, subway right now that says like, discover card, it's more human. All the advertising I feel like has taken it so far and it's just like trying to put it, like, like hang out with us. And I don't want to hang out with my discover card. Like when it comes to online privacy and Google, you know, kind of like, chronicling your searches and utilizing you know your personal information to target ads specific to you it's invasive and it, it's offensive I love like changing my gender on Facebook you can change your gender to male or um, just start clicking on random things and then like your ads will change you know so it's it's fun to I think it's fun to screw with them actually it's strange that every day there aren't like three network executives just killing themselves every day, that they're just not hanging themselves or throwing themselves in front of cars out of just the guilt of producing some of the just shit content that gets out there. So there's something, when you watch it, you think, my God, there are people who are that inhuman in this world that they feel completely okay putting a person like Nancy Grace in front of a camera and letting her go on and on about dead babies while selling products for pharmaceutical companies. And probably all the advertising that works on me, and on anyone, works without them knowing it. So maybe I'm full of shit. I probably am full of shit, and this is exactly what they want me to say. You know what I mean? Advertising doesn't work on me. I'm gonna get a Pepsi. <laughs>